Welcome. I am so thrilled to be here on my first Sunday as your new bridge pastor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Emily Tanis Lickle. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I just started here on this past Tuesday, and I've already done a memorial service in this space. <laughs> there was a memorial service here yesterday that I officiated for uh, Nancy Teninga, who lived in the neighborhood. We're going to have a great time together. <laughs> uh, I've had uh, a great great time getting to know um, Larissa, and, and I've met Joe, I've met the council, and uh, I feel really, really welcomed. So thank you. Welcome to those of you who are visiting today. Um, I won't necessarily, if you're not my family, I won't know if you're a visitor. So hopefully I'll figure <laughs> out who's a newcomer and who's long term um, at, our, at our hospitality hour after the service. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Love is in this place. Joy is in this place. Breathe it in. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded, traditional land of the Coast Salish people, including the Duwamish and the Suquamish people, past and present. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish and Suquamish tribes. Elkai United Church of Christ pays real rent to the Duwamish tribe, as do many of you. And if you don't already, um, we invite you to prayerfully consider it. Whether you are physically here in this room, or Zooming in, or watching this recording sometime in the future, you matter. You are loved. May God's peace surround you now and always. brief commercial interruption here. <laughs> so Emily has welcomed us, but I would like us as a congregation to welcome our new bridge pastor, Emily. Thank you. It was pretty amazing to come in and help set up Friday for the memorial service yesterday and find out that someone that just started Tuesday and was planning on preaching for the first time this morning had said, oh, sure, I can handle a memorial service on Saturday before that. <laughs> And from what I understand from Larissa, it went beautifully. So thank you and welcome. We will enjoy Emily's presence here. Thanks. Thank you. And good morning again. And Pastor Emily, we're really looking forward to. Thank you. May we be cultivated, nurtured, and nourished in community. We look for Jesus to learn how to bear fruit of loving kindness. We continue. We are strengthened by the Holy Spirit. We share this hope with the world. Let us worship God together. The first scripture reading is from Psalms, chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. It's paraphrased by Nan C. Merrill. To you, O love, I lift up my soul. O heart within my heart, in you I place my trust. Let me not feel unworthy. Let not fear rule over me. Yes, may all who open their hearts savor you and bless the earth. Compel me to know your ways, O love. Instruct me upon your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for through you will I know wholeness. I shall reflect your light both day and night. I know of your mercy, blessed one, and of your unconditional love. You have been with me from the beginning. Forgive the many times I have walked away from you, choosing to follow my own will. I seek your guidance once again. I yearn to know your peace. 
Companion me as I open to your will. You are gracious and just, O Spirit of Truth, happy to guide those who miss their way. You enjoy teaching all who are open, all who choose to live in truth. Your paths are loving and sure, O Holy One, and those who give witness to you through their lives are blessed beyond measure. That's from her book, Psalms for Praying, an Invitation to Wholeness. And the second reading is from Paul's epistle to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And this is from the New Revised Standard Version. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Spirit of God, truly you are in this place. Surround us with your love. Inspire us. Provoke us. Change us. Amen. Think for a moment about your favorite fruit. Imagine it in your hand. What is the weight of it? What does it feel like? What is its texture? Is it squishy? Is it hard? What color is it? What's the texture? What does it smell like? And imagine taking a bite, how it feels beneath your teeth, the taste, that burst of flavor in your mouth. Well, my family of four visited some extended family last weekend and we were in Birch Bay. We enjoyed many strawberries, local summer berries that were washed and sliced in seasonal perfection. My in-laws frequently stop off to buy heaping flats of strawberries from farm stands in their drive between Birch Bay and Linden, and they are worth every penny. Over our weekend together, some of these berries were accompanied by shortcake and ice cream or whipped cream or both. <laughs> then there was the way these red gems were prepared by the local coffee shop. Sourdough bread smeared with Nutella and then these sliced strawberries, red as can be, arranged on the top, and the whole thing dusted with powdered sugar. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
But my personal favorite way to enjoy them is straight from the bowl. I start by thinking, I'll just have one or two, and pretty soon it's just a continuous flow because it's the real deal. There are no artificial flavors added to a locally grown strawberry. It was good fruit and it was shared well. Should I arrange my microphone differently so I'm not giving feedback? Closer to my mouth. I was moving it farther away thinking that would be better. I just feel really loud. I'm not really loud? Okay. <laughs> we'll figure this out together. <laughs> Paul and Timothy wrote a letter to the people of Colossa saying, we are praying for you, thanking God for you, because we have heard of your faith. We have heard how you love, and we know of your hope, and that your faith, hope, and love has been born fruit among you in your community. It was good fruit, and it was shared well. Friends, I have been praying for you and thanking God for you because I have heard of your faith. I have heard how you love, and I know of your hope and how your faith, hope, and love has borne fruit among you in your community. Fruit that is the real deal. Nothing artificial added. And I've particularly heard it from your neighbor and my previous church, St. John the Baptist Episcopal Church here in West Seattle. I lost track of the number of people there who said to me, oh, you're going to Elkai UCC? Those are a great bunch of people. You are who you say you are. You are known in West Seattle for being justice seekers and bridge builders. And in the few days that I've been among you, I can say, yep, that's true. When a bowl of strawberries graces the table of a gathering, people will find them and eat them until there's just a little juice pooled at the bottom of the dish. Who knows how long that macaroni salad has been sitting out? I'm going to eat the strawberries. Fresh, sweet, and ripe. Now, don't get me wrong, I love salty snacks, too. My current favorite is honey barbecue Fritos. Anybody try those, those little twists? But I have to tell you, after I eat a handful of them, I don't feel so great. When I eat fruit, I'm quenched. My body rejoices. It's saying, finally, you're giving me something I need. I can use this. At Elkai, United Church of Christ, you are a community of faith, hope, and love. You offer what is needed, what is nourishing, what can be used. And I imagine it has not been easy. You've seen a decrease in attendance, like most churches during the pandemic. You have a smaller number of people, yet somehow there's still all the same stuff that needs to get done maybe more with fewer people it means each person has more responsibility mix with that the emotion and time required with multiple transitions in leadership and i imagine some of you might be feeling a bit burned out take heart god is at work the soil is fertile and as we continue our outward focus for a meaningful, multi-faith community, we will keep bearing fruit. It is faith, hope, and love. It is making a difference in the world. Faith in action. Missional focus ministry it starts within. And we hear it in today's text in Paul's words. Bearing fruit in the world comes 
when we are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And as we seek spiritual wisdom, guidance from God, our mission with God, it bears fruit. Paul wrote, may God strengthen you as you bear fruit in every good work. Not if you bear fruit or when you bear fruit. It is as you bear fruit. Because every good work you do, every bit of knowledge you gain, every prayer that you pray, every meal you prepare, every kindness you show, all the money you give, the time you take, the petition you sign, the letter you write, the stand you make, all of it bears fruit. And what does fruit do? It grows. It multiplies. It brings people together. It offers real nourishment. It's the real deal. The good work you do, it bears fruit. It is good fruit. And it is shared well. Paul and Timothy wrote, we have not ceased praying for you. And as your bridge pastor, I will not cease praying for you. For us. And for me, that means I will be holding you always in my heart. And this doesn't happen at a certain time of day or with a specific prayer. Well, sometimes it will. As I wrote in my newsletter article next, last week, I want to know the details of your lives so that I can pray for you with intention. And in that article, I ask that everybody here send me an email and let me know something about you so that I can hold you in prayer. But beyond that, my praying for you is a continual holding, a continual asking, as Paul put it, that you would be filled with the knowledge of God, of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to God as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. The prayer that I pray builds on what God is already doing in our midst. The discernment you have experienced, the calling to be a multi-faith community center. I pray not only for you, but with you. That you fully live into your future story, the fruit that you have longed to bear and that you bear already. And I ask you, as your bridge pastor, to pray with and for me. We'll pray for our life together here and the neighborhood beyond, beyond these walls. Please pray for me that I might bear fruit that will be nourishing to you and to our wider community. Paul continues with this blessing. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. May we be made strong with all the strength that comes from God. May we be patient through it all joyfully giving thanks as we live into the hope of how God is guiding us as a church, as individuals, as communities. The sharing of strawberries I experienced last weekend, it was communal. It was outward focused. From where I sat in the living room, I listened to the strawberry commentary coming from the kitchen could someone wash and slice these up? Did everybody get some? Don't forget, there's still more in the fridge. I listened to the last few dish up servings of strawberry shortcake, dividing up the last of the latest haul of precious berries, so particularly to be sure that each had at least five slices. 
The good work we do bears fruit in the world, fruit that is shared. It grows, it multiplies, and there's always more. As an open and affirming church, we remind each person that they are loved exactly as they are. That is good fruit. As a progressive faith community, we know that God is bigger than our conception of God. Each person's unique spirituality expands our understanding of our creator. Questions and doubts are all part of the journey, and that is good fruit. As a beacon of hope on Southwest Hind Street in West Seattle, we offer fruits of faith, hope, and love. Because that is the fruit that we have been given by God. It is good fruit. It brings joy like a child with a handful of fresh strawberries. May we share it well.